everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us on today's webinar, Boost, Boost Productivity and Profits with Field Service Metrics, brought to you by Technology Services Industry Association and sponsored by ServiceMax. My name is Inga Triago, your moderator for today. Before we get started, we just have a few housekeeping items. Audio is routed through your computer speakers. If you encounter audio quality or technical issues, let us know right away via the questions panel. You may access full screen view via the toggle button located at the top right area of the console. We do encourage you to ask questions at any time via the questions panel. If you don't get to your question today, we will follow up with you via email. We also encourage you to tweet out your insights and takeaways from today's live presentation using the at ServiceMax and at TSA community Twitter handles. And finally, a link to a recorded version of today's webinar and the PDF of the presentation will be sent out in the next 24 hours via email. Once again, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Our presenters today are John Ragsdale, VP Research, Technology, and Social for TSIA, and Melissa Morgan, Director of Product Marketing for ServiceMax. We do have a lot of exciting material to share in the next 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and get started by turning things over to our first presenter. John, over to you. Thank you, Inga. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're talking today about uh, the top five power metrics for field service, and very happy to have you join us. So metrics is something that uh, I think everybody struggles with. There's so much interest in metrics. I've got a slide here uh, showing all of the inquiries that we've received from TSI members over the last year, so several hundred metrics. And when we categorize those uh, by the specific service business challenge, which is something that we tend to track everything uh, at here at TSIA, we see that uh, quite a few of them uh, are related to metrics. In fact, over a third of all of the field service inquiries that we receive uh, are about specific metrics or questions about metrics programs. So today we're going to uh, take a deep dive into some particular metrics. And uh, we spent some time preparing for today's webinar, uh, working with our sponsor today is ServiceMax. And we were able to uh, work with the global customer transformation team team to identify five of the metrics that they're hearing a lot about and interacting with their customers about quite a bit. So we're going to be talking about first-time fix, contract and warranty leakage, service to cash cycle, and the service contract attach rate. And while we go through these, uh, we're going to have a very interactive discussion today with Melissa Morgan, Director of Product Marketing for ServiceMax, and we're going to try to answer some of the common questions we tend to hear about metrics, such as how do you define them, how do you calculate them, where do you actually get the data, where does uh, the metric come from, and how often should we monitor this metric? Is this a daily something we should keep an eye on, weekly, monthly, whatever? So let's go ahead and jump in with our first power metric, which is first-time fix rates. Uh, so this is the percentage of customer problems resolved on the first on-site visit. So the first time you send a field tech out to the customer's home or office, they're able to solve the problem. And this single metric is of huge interest to field service uh, organizations. And the reason for that is that the metric has huge impacts in two areas. One, internally, from a cost perspective, uh, the average price to roll a truck to a customer site uh, averages around four to five hundred dollars. Some companies report as much as sixteen hundred dollars, the fully burdened cost to roll a truck. So if you're not able to fix the problem on the first visit, you're spending another sixteen hundred dollars to roll that truck out a second time. So being able to solve problems on the first visit has a huge cost savings impl implication for field service. It also has a big impact on customer satisfaction and loyalty scores. Customers love you to get in and out quickly, fix the problem on the first time. It shows that you really understand the equipment, their problems, etc., cetera, uh, and tends to really boost uh, their satisfaction with working with you. So I'm sharing some industry averages here from our field service benchmark. We see that uh, on average, 85% uh, of, uh, of service visits are solved on the first time um, 
uh, visit to the customer site. If we look at the top third, we're seeing a, an average of around 90% from our pace setters. If we look at the lowest third, uh, the laggards around 82%, which I still think is a, a pretty good first time fix rate. Uh, so, you know, kind of compare that with your own number, kind of get an idea for where you are. And if your numbers are lower than uh, a lot of your peers, this could be something that you want to focus on. So uh, now I want to turn things over to our guest speaker today to talk a little bit more about first time fix rates. Melissa Morgan, Director of Product Marketing for ServiceMax. Melissa, take it away. Thanks so much, John, and thanks everybody for your time today. Basically what we want to do on today's webinar is go through a little bit more around each of these metrics, talk a little bit about what are the areas of your business that you can look to to try to drive improvements around these key metrics. I want to talk a little bit about how ServiceMax technology can help you look at solving some of these challenges and, and making some improvements. And then I want to share a few customer stories as well to really give examples of how different types of businesses have been able to drive improvements in these areas. So that's kind of the flow that I'll be going through today. To start off with first time fix, obviously this is one of the most critical metric, metrics to field service businesses. It's one that nearly every business is tracking. Hopefully it's critical to uh, the dashboards and reports that you're using on a regular basis. When we look at how businesses can improve first time fix rates, there's a number of areas that are really causing the problems that you can use to leverage to uh, improvements around. The first one is lack of spare parts. So when a tech arrives at a job site and doesn't have all the parts on hand that they need to fix the issue, it doesn't have visibility into spares and, and inventory in the field, that creates a lot of problems um, for being able to obviously complete the visit on the, on the first time. Lack of skills. When you send a technician out and they're not the exact fit for the equipment on site and the machine that they need to repair or install, obviously that, that can create a disconnect and, and problems if they're not able to then collaborate with somebody to gain that knowledge. And that leads to really kind of the last area um, that can impact first time fix, which is poor communication and planning. And so at the end of the day, um, to be able to communicate that with the home office, with other technicians, very easily without kind of draining the time that they're going to be on site at the same time and facilitate that collaboration is really critical. The last area um, that can really cause a drain on first time fix as well is, you know, this concept of reactive service. And if, if you don't have visibility into sending the right technicians with the right parts and the right skill set on site and you're doing it kind of in this very um, kind of reactive mode where you're not giving them all that access to information, that can be a big drain on, on this area as well. But in terms of improving first time fix, I think that's probably one of the strongest areas where we're seeing a lot of interest and excitement from our customers around what is the shift to proactive and ultimately predictive service really mean when um, machines start to get connected to the Internet of Things and we're able to actually have more contextual information right there in the field, driving the ability to deliver really proactive, intelligent service. That's really going to change the game for first time fix because the technician is going to go in with um, complete information, access to um, the details of the machine, the different components and configurations of the machine, real time data on what's happening. So my um, Estimation of what we've seen with some of our early adopters of this technology, companies who have been doing M2M -M for a while, is that that really has a lot of uh, impact on first time fix specifically. But other areas that you can kind of start out with to improve first time fix is really driving visibility around inventory, improving dispatch so that that skills that I talked about piece is really handled in an interactive and automated way. And then also facilitating um, collaboration through technology. So that, let's take a little bit of a look at how ServiceNet can help you address that. The first thing I have up here is an example of our dispatch console. So this is our interactive scheduling technology that really allows companies of all different sizes to be able to effectively and efficiently dispatch their technicians. It takes into consideration um, skill sets. Uh, what uh, certifications, for instance, technicians might have to make sure that you're getting the right people with the right parts to the right job at the right time. Not too fast. This next piece just kind of highlights the skills. So you can see here an example of different skill names that 
a company may have for uh, different technicians, whether or not they're required or optional skills, even the level of confidence or certification that they may have with, with regards to those specific skill sets. So really drilling down and being able to search in an advanced way for the right technicians to assign to the right job. And then also collaboration. So this is our ServiceNext mobile application, and you can hear some of the um, collaboration capabilities to be able to kind of chat back and forth with different technicians, service leaders, whoever may be that um, domain expert in the problem that you're trying to solve right there in the field in an offline mode. And then also troubleshooting. So on the right, you can see our iPhone app as an example. The technician can drill right into troubleshooting, view manuals, videos to be able to effectively um, fix the machine or um, service that location the first time. And then the last image I have for you is an example of where we're moving to. So our connected field service solution where we're going to start to embed this real-time connected machine data right into ServiceMax, trigger an alert so that a work order is automatically created when, when a machine may have an issue. And the technician is going to be equipped with all of that context-based information right there in the field to be able to more intelligently uh, install and repair equipment. So hopefully the, those first-time fix rates will start to go through the roof. So let's talk a little bit about a ServiceNext customer that has seen some success with first-time fix. Luminex is um, headquartered in Austin, Texas, and they were struggling with um, their ERP solution. They are a, um, a life sciences company that really focuses on biological testing equipment used by researchers. And they've been a ServiceNext customer for a few years now. They initially were having challenges around poor data visibility, especially across departments. So these cross-functional teams didn't have visibility into what was happening with service. There wasn't a lot of collaboration going on. And the commercial teams also didn't have a real-time view of scheduled and completed service activity. The engineers also weren't able to communicate new opportunities to sales in a timely fashion. So they were having a lot of uh, challenges around manual processes and rigid systems. So what was Luminex able to do with ServiceNext? Really the core of it is they started to look to our mobile for iPad app, and they leveraged this across the field. They also introduced um, our interactive scheduling piece that I talked about, um, you know, visibility into parts and inventory so that technicians could really see um, what, what, what they had in trunk stock. If they needed a part, they could see who else on their team might have it or what warehouse they might be able to get it from. And they were also able to start to create estimates in the field. So that really drove a lot of um, productivity for them. And at the end of the day, they were able to improve their same-day service caller, their first-time fix resolution, to more than 95%. So well above that kind of top best-in-class that John mentioned in the, in the previous slide. They also saw some great improvements in customer satisfaction and contractual response times as well. And so um, Luminex is really a shining example. And when we hear Steve Nava, who's kind of our champion at Luminex, talk about this, the thing that he really goes back to is kind of that cross-functional visibility, really a cultural change in the company. So the technicians embracing mobile and really feeling that trust that comes when they have all the information that they need in their fingertips, no matter where they are, whether they have internet connectivity. And so they were able to drive some really great improvements in first-time fix. So at the end of the day, um, what's the bottom line? First time fix really is a productivity and a profitability metric. And if you have the tools to fix something the first time, your techs are going to be more efficient, move on to the next job faster so they can capture more revenue and avoid those costly second visits. Fantastic. Well, let's uh, kick off our number two uh, hot metric, which is around contract leakage. And contract leakage are when we're giving services away for free because the support employees or the field employees don't really understand the actual entitlements or the actual contract uh, language or the, the parameters for every customer. And uh, there are a lot of reasons for this. This is something we hear a lot of companies complaining about. Uh, most of our members, you know, they're all big tech companies. They've grown through mergers and acquisitions, and they very often have five, six, maybe a dozen different contract databases. And so employees don't always know where to look to find the correct entitlement information, uh, or it could be that the contract info is out of date. 
I mean, we, we like to think that there's this nirvana of the CRM system that everything is in a single place, but for most companies, they haven't really got there yet. Um, there's another issue that sometimes customers don't really understand uh, the service level that they're entitled to, so they may be pushing you for a faster response time or a faster on-site fix than they've actually paid for. So I have some uh, data here showing the percentage of revenue that comes from each of the various maintenance contract programs. And you can see, not surprisingly, the largest percentage of revenue is coming from premium support. So we know that you know, we're allocating resources to making those premium customers happy. It could be a one-hour response time or a 15-minute callback time, whatever uh, those parameters are. we got to make sure that we're not giving those extreme parameters to the basic support because if that's where we're putting our resources, we're clearly not going to break even on our margins uh, when we start looking at what we're spending versus what we're bringing in. So getting a really um, easy to access and accurate look at each customer's contract. It may even be a different service level for every piece of equipment they have. So it can be very complicated. Well, Melissa, I'm guessing that this is something that you hear about uh, from your customers as well. Could you talk about contract leakage from your perspective? Absolutely. And I want to start by really covering how we look at improving um, contract leakage. It really all centers around entitlements. And at ServiceMax, we like to automate those entitlements and, and push that out to the field so that wherever technicians are on their mobile device, they know exactly what price and what coverage um, their customers have and have access to that customer information. So here's some examples of how ServiceMax can do that. You can see, again, ServiceMax mobile for iPad and iPhone. On the left-hand side, you can take a look at our counter reading. So for an installed product, for example, if a technician is out there and needs to capture um, kind of how much a certain machine has been used and then know whether or not that um, kind of level of service is covered after a certain amount of usage, they have that information. They can also view the details of the service contract on mobile. And on the right-hand side, get price, which is essentially our automated entitlements out there in the field. Um, so a lot of power, so technicians are never left hanging, not knowing whether service is covered or not. And this is just a look at that entitlement within the technician workflow. So from the time they create an estimate in the field, the estimate gets checked and a quote gets created, prices are pulled from the service contract and service map, um, or, or in the system that you're managing contract in if you have an integration, and then you can send a quote to the customer for approval knowing that um, the right level of labor pricing, parts pricing, and all the granular details of that contract are um, being checked for entitlement. So an example of a company that has seen a lot of success with this um, using ServiceMax, they're a global medical device company, a um, very large company that really focuses on um, medical devices that are used in critical situations, so operating rooms, for example. And they really will focus on reducing FDA, um, reducing risk related to FDA compliance and also improving ability to um, reduce leakage around contracts and specifically around driving improvements around selling more preventive maintenance plans. And so with ServiceMax, they were able to gain that visibility by introducing mobile and really selling more PM plans into their base and also leveraging those entitlements to create visibility for the field. And as a result, they were able to reduce their contract leakage from 12% down to 5%. So at the end of the day, top performing organizations are eliminating contract leakage because it's a big drain on both um, the revenue that you want to try to generate in the field, as well as the cost of um, giving service away for free. So really focusing on getting that visibility into contracts is critical. Wow, I love that they were able to reduce that down to 5%. That's really impressive. Um, well, let's move on to our number three metric, which is warranty leakage. And this is uh, a bit similar to the contract leakage, but this is when you have a lot of customers who opted not to buy the extended warranty. They're just on the warranty, which is probably 90 days, 120 days at the max. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're not giving them more services than the warranty covers or that we're not giving them uh, any sort of service beyond uh, the warranty period. And 
So, uh, you know, that means that you, again, need to have a very accurate and easy to access contract database so you can see uh, the terms of the warranty and that gets pretty tricky because every product can have a different warranty period. Warranties can change from year to year or version to version. So it, it can be very complicated to keep up with. Uh, and also we need to make sure um, that we've got from a sales perspective that we're really pushing customers to buy that extended warranty. Customers often don't understand how complex the technology is they're purchasing uh, or else they would really be a little afraid to go uh, with no support net out there. So I have a, a, some data here, the percentage of customers that are under contract and you can see the industry average is 60%, which means 40% of customers decided not to add a maintenance agreement after the warranty expired. So that's a lot of customers out there. Uh, keep in mind, uh, and we're going to talk about attach rate in a moment, but typically companies uh, very often actually lose money on the product sale and they make up for it on uh, selling these additional services. So um, if when we have all of these customers not under contract, uh, it very likely means that our margins are not doing really, really well. Uh, so Melissa, what do you have on the topic of warranty leakage? Thanks, John. So warranty leakage is similar to contract leakage, right? It's really about visibility into what's covered. And so focusing on giving all of the appropriate stakeholders excuse me, access to that information and making it easily accessible is really critical. So how does ServiceMax help you do that? We really provide detailed warranty coverage information for um, all of the key stakeholders that need access to it in our online application. You can search warranty coverage by product, see detailed warranty terms as well, and check entitlement details to make sure that um, the, the warranties that you're providing service on are covered as part of uh, that agreement. So as an example, APA, who is a HVAC company that provides critical airflow products, parts, and service for commercial clients such as healthcare, pharmaceutical, et cetera, was able to leverage ServiceMax to really help drive revenue improvements and manage costs so that they could transform into a profit center. And one of the key areas for that was really reduction in warranty leakage. And they were able to achieve a 20% reduction in warranty leakage by leveraging our technology um, both as mobile in the field through entitlements and better work order management as well. And so, again, just another example of how technology can really help drive these business improvements. So at the end of the day, um, if you can't stop, you can't stop a leak in, unless you have visibility into where it's happening. So access to reporting detailed information for your um, your technicians and your reps is really critical to be able to manage warranty leakage effectively. So our number four metric today is service to cash cycle. And this is the elapsed time from when a field tech completes the job at a customer site to when accounting receives payment for it. So uh, I usually call this DSO or day sales outstanding. Uh, if we look at our maintenance contract mix, uh, the data on the right, you see that only 8% of companies uh, or customers have gone for this pay-as-you-go contract. But we saw in that previous slide that as much as 40% of customers don't have a service contract. So if they have a problem, then they're going to have to be in this pay-as-you-go program, which means that collecting uh, this cash becomes really, really important. So if customers aren't paying their service bills on time, it typically means uh, maybe they weren't satisfied with the, the repair work that was done. Uh, you probably know about that from your CSAT surveys. Uh, another common issue is that we're not giving them enough detail. Uh, so this is, uh, we've got a question from the audience from San about integrating to ERP systems, and this is where this becomes very important because you want your uh, service system to be passing all the audit trail information when the tech arrived, the parts they replaced, who approved it, a signature approval from a manager on site. Anything that you have should be automatically passed along in that billing, and they tend to sign those checks a lot faster uh, when they've got all of that detail. Uh, another thing that I hear about is they would have paid while you were on site if you had been able to take a credit card swipe. Uh, and that's something that uh, luckily is starting to be available with a lot more uh, field service techs because of the mobile technologies today. They may be able to scan or tap that card and process the payment while they're on site so you don't even have to worry uh, about billing after the fact. Uh, so Melissa, talk to me about service to cash cycle. 
Absolutely. So it really comes down to a simple formula. Visibility plus automation really accelerates your service to cash cycle. And what do I mean by visibility? What labor rate does a particular customer pay? Which parts of the job are covered under warranty or service contract? When you equip technicians with this instant information, it really drives that visibility. And then automation. So visibility into data is only the first step. You still need to automate that work order process to achieve these shorter cycles. So how are you going to do that with ServiceNex? First, we provide in offline setting service reports to the technician to be able to close out that job with the customer after debrief. All of the detailed information about the job are right there in the app, and the customer and the technician can both sign off on it, triggering the invoice to go immediately after the job is completed. And we have had a few customers that have been very successful in reducing these um, service to cash cycle rates and improved cash flow. Tundra Solutions is one example of that. They're an instrumentation and control specialist in the oil and gas industry. And they've really grown into a full solution provider to their manufacturing partners. Their cash flow was painfully slow. Most customers weren't receiving an invoice until four to six weeks after work was completed. And by introducing ServiceMax in our mobile app to really drive that um, service report invoice and signature capture process, they improved cash flow with a 75% reduction in time from service delivery to invoice. Luminex, who we talked about as our very first example around first time fix, has also seen dramatic improvements from introducing mobile for iPad. 28 days down to 96 hours for service to invoice improvement. So some significant um, results here. So at the end of the day, it's all about cash flow and improving your ability to have cash on hand and driving um, working capital, access to working capital, and profitability. So back to you, John. Okay, this brings us to our fifth and final metric for today, service contract attach rate. And this, uh, which I'm sure all of you know, is the percent of customers who purchase a maintenance contract uh, to go along with the product that they're buying from you. And I've got some uh, contract attach rates here, and if you find that your attach rate is lower than average, uh, it could mean that you need to work on your bundling and your pricing. You may need to beef up services marketing so customers understand uh, why they should purchase purchase it, the ROI for getting these uh, these uh, attached uh, maintenance contracts and upgrading to the premium versions. And you may have a problem with service sales skills, which I think a lot of companies do. Uh, salespeople are oriented towards selling products, not necessarily services. Uh, so Melissa, talk to us about uh, the attach rate. I'm sure that's something that's very important to your customers as well. Absolutely. Contract attach rates are critical because it's so tied to revenue, right? And it's also the lowest hanging fruit for service organizations to grow their bottom line. It's simply, um, you know, three things that you can think about when you want to improve your attach rate. Number one, track your attach rate. Make service contract sales a strategic priority. Incentivize those sales. So give technicians incentives to capitalize on upsell and cross sell opportunities. And really empower your tech with mobile devices as we've already been talking about. So let's take a look at what that can be in ServiceMax. First is visibility into information. So as the leader of your service organization, really being able to know what contracts are up for renewal, have more information into your install base and really know are there products that are becoming end of life, can you recommend complementary products, and being able to drive those recommendations and business insights into your business. And then at the same time, enabling techs in the field with the tool to capture leads, send opportunities back to sale, or create quotes and estimates right there, sales, or create quotes for estimates right there in the field. And there have been a number of service max customers that have been successful in this. One example is a chemistry instruments company, who's a global company that was really um, focused on replacing their existing database. They were really focused on visibility into information when they first came to us for service max. And at the end of the day, um, their lack of communication between service and sales was a, was a critical problem. So after ServiceNex, they were able to improve that collaboration really getting on one ecosystem on the Salesforce platform that ServiceNex is native to. And they were able to increase their service contract sales due to service and sales alignment and enabling technicians in the field on ServiceNex mobile for iPad. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is that contracts are a really powerful way to drive more revenue for your business. And if you empower technicians as your trusted advisors with the technology that they need, no matter whether they're online or offline, to drive those leads and um, make sure they're capturing any additional contracts um, for your customer base when at that initial point of uh, product sale, 
you're going to be able to improve your contract attach rates. And, um, and that's really our last metric for today. So I'm going to wanted to thank everybody for um, your time today and, and really walking through some of these key metrics with us and what we've seen from our base uh, ServiceNext customers um, using the technology. Thank you, Melissa and John, for a very insightful and informative presentation. You shared a lot of really interesting data. Uh, so we are coming to the conclusion of today's webinar. just want to give everyone a reminder that if you enjoyed today's presentation and the content that was presented, take a moment to go to our upcoming webinars page on TSA.com and browse for our upcoming webinars and register for them today. Again, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us on today's webinar, Boost Productivity and Products with Field Service Metrics. And a quick reminder, be on the lookout for a link to the recorded version of today's webinar and the PDF of the presentation that will be sent out to you via email within the next 24 hours. Thank you, everyone, for taking time to join us today. And we hope to see you at our next TSA webinar very soon. Have a great day, everyone.